Hey everybody and welcome back to another Tuesday tip where in this video we're gonna finally do some trick tips again. It's been probably years since I've done a how-to on some tricks and um, I'm at Race Street right now and with Carl Hinckley and uh, he had a really cool idea where myself, Trevor, and him, maybe a couple other people are going to kind of give a quick explainer on a trick that we like to do. And Carl is up first with a trick that he calls a foobar abubica. Real quick though. Looking a little dirty there. All right, so first of all, can you just run through the trick itself? Yes. What happens? Uh, I named it a foobar because I didn't know what else to call it. Um, I don't have a locking lever on my bike here. I wanted to be able to bar spin while in an abubica. So in order to do that, I have to start with my hand upside down, okay? So then once I start to bring it, there's two changes where I gotta re-grip this lever with my hand. So watch, we go like this, and I have to re-grip it, and then I have to turn it over like this, and then I have to re-grip it again, all while keeping it squeezed tight enough to stay locked into the abubica. So the kinda base... scared me and felt weird. <laughs> right, so the base trick itself is an abubica with a bar spin. Correct. But you're doing what you have to do to make it work without a locking without lever. Without a coaster or breaker, a coaster or break. locking, exactly. Right, so three years it took me to land my first one <laughs> so I'll we'll do a couple detail shots obviously that you already saw and then Carl's gonna land the trick oh, oh yeah yeah that's much better Aaron. There. are there any like special tips or things to remember? Hold on, and when you feel it going bad, bail. Yeah. Because I've, I've cracked my tailbone plenty of times trying to figure it out. <laughs> and, and I would say a very important thing with this is to keep the fact that the lever always has to be pulled in mind. Because the second tension comes off of your brake lever, there goes your bike out from under you, like it's the, gone. The best tip I that helped me figure this out was realizing the entire time you need to be in the danger zone. So further back, like when you're learning manuals at first, how you gotta tip back. That's kind of what helped me finally hold on long enough to get the tip. And that is the Fubar Abubica. And after Carl's Fubar Abubica comes my trick. And I had a struggle thinking of what to do, but I think I've got a good one for everybody. A knack knack double peg stall on a quarter pipe. So let's break this down. Normally with my Tuesday tip videos with tricks, I like to talk about prerequisites and things that you need to know before you actually try this trick. The thing you need to know is obviously a double peg stall. You need to be at a level where you can consistently do a double peg stall every single time. When it comes to the knack knack, you can take steps to kind of going into it. So I'll show, if you wanna get on the other side of the ramp, I'll yep. do a couple one-footed double pegs where you kind of get comfortable landing in it one-footed. Because you can really work your way up to it. You don't have to just go straight into it. Like even just that, where you're putting your foot on the ramp, but you know that you can land it because where we're gonna go with this is that you're going like this into it. Okay, so hold on. My quick question is, are you doing it knack on the way up or are you double pegging and then throwing it? You do it in the on the way into it. Nice. I'll do one real quick and then explain where okay. we get, how we get there. So it's, it's honestly more of a leap of faith than anything, but it's no different than the same motion that you do to get into a double peg where you're leaning the bike and putting the pegs on there. You're just bringing the foot around while you do that motion. So you don't have to do the knack at first. You could just do a one footer. Just like that. And once you get the one footer down, it's a matter of getting yourself comfortable with taking it further and further. So we can do like a mini knack before we get to like the Chris Fox, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so like you could get there. And just once you're comfortable landing with that one foot on, it's a matter of putting your foot where it needs to go. So let's film one. You got a question? No, I was just gonna say that uh, when you say that Chris Fox, can you do a Chris Fox knack knack in a double peg? Are you gonna show us that, Steez? Yeah, you're just in the wrong spot. Come to this side. Okay. <laughs> where do you want me? Right in the middle somewhere. Okay. I'll just go around you. Oh, 
was, I don't know, it was pretty good, dude. Like, so yeah, that's where look. you can end up. Like, once you're comfortable landing with that one foot on the peg, and you're comfortable doing that leap of faith to lean your pegs into it, you can pretty much dictate where your foot goes. And honestly, I think that putting your foot over gives you that push to get your pegs on the way that you need to. So I would say once you can do double pegs every single time and you can land in one foot or you've learned can-can ones, it's, it's pretty much in the same wheelhouse and you can go for the knack-knack double peg. There's that. And then it's literally, you take it, I mean, if you can get here, you can get here. Because it's a matter of where your foot's at and your pegs are on, so you don't have to worry about like bringing it back together. Like I'm just sitting in it until you want to bring it back together. That was good. That was real good right there, dude. So that's the knack knack double peg. Now we'll go talk to Trevor about a Miami hopper or bar endo on a wedge. All right, so next up in the video is Trevor Watcher with a really awesome trick to explain. So Miami hopper, bar endo to fakie on this wedge here. How's it work? Uh, you first want to just start out on the ground uh, because doing it on the wedge is a little more dangerous. Yeah. Um, but you can, all you need is some front brakes and you can probably do the trick. So what's the concept? What's the, the process to do it on the ground? Like what do you do? You just roll at like a medium speed and you want to hit the brake. You want to do an endo and snap into it a little bit and as it's like starting to snap you want to go to grab the seat. So it's kind of happening at the same it's time. It's kind of happening at the same time and then when you pull back Make sure your hand's open and catching in the web of your hand so that you have like a maximum t like grip. Right. What are you doing with your body at that time, like throughout the trick? You're basically just staying lean back. Lean back and then are you bringing it back forward to bring it all together? What's going on there? You're just kind of like pulling and unwinding it. Okay. Cool. Now the difference between a bar endo and a Miami hopper is the peg hits. Show that once more. So the difference is that's the bar endo, this is the bar endo and then Miami hopper this is, is the Miami hopper and actually guys with longer pegs they actually snap it down like that so the bar hits Wow and it actually like stalls out. So what's the secret to getting back? That is just a hard yank you want to stay your butt and everything is gonna be over the back tire yeah and you're gonna yank pretty much as hard as you can. And make sure this hand is open and you catch. You catch right in the, the web of your hand. So that way you, you have the maximum amount to like grab. Right. You wanna do one on flat real quick? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So so what's the uh, trick to taking it to the wedge? Is it the same thing, it's but the, on a wedge? It's the same thing, but on a wedge. So it, it's just a little scarier because you have to actually fakie. Um, but does, does the angle of the wedge make anything different? It actually makes the getting into it easier and getting out of it easier, but it's just the fear factor of being up there. Right. And it's better just to learn it on the ground make sure you have it before you take it to something because it's essentially the same thing yeah okay even Maybe. if you're doing it on top of the ramp it's the same thing oh okay so you don't you can do both you can do it on the face of the wedge yeah or on the top and yeah. then when it comes to quarters quarters is dangerous because you could flip back and hit your head that, i've done that, it a few times that's another time another video, yeah, that's another video. <laughs> but it does work it does so you want to do it on the wedge yeah And that is the Miami Hopper it slash technically bar endo is what Trevor just did. But Trevor does do Miami Hopper tricks too on the quarters, wedges, all kinds of stuff. All right, so now that you've mastered the bar endo or Miami Hopper on a wedge to fakie and you have front brakes on your bike, now we're gonna talk to Sam Bustle here about a fakie 
no footed bar spin on a wedge. So you can do the bar, bar endo and then turn around and do a fakey no footed bar. So Sam, what um, is that? It's just a no footed bar spin? Like that's the essence of the trick? So when you're going up, if you fake it and you stop, your front wheel's not moving, which makes the bar spin not go sideways when you throw it. And I just kept doing that. And then I was like, my boy Troy Merkel, he did it without his feet. I was like, dang, that's the craziest thing so, I've ever so seen. So the essence of it is essentially you're just doing a no-footed bar spin. Yeah. That's what the trick, like I'm defining the trick there. Yeah. So what do you need to know to do that trick? How do you get to the level of being able to do the no-foot bar? Very comfy fit 180 fakies, preferably with a free coaster. So that way you keep your le feet level. Mm -hmm. And then you just go up, do a whole bunch of fakie bar spins. Once you get that dialed, you literally just go up, no-footer, and then bar spin. So the no-footer comes first. No-footer first. Absolutely. Okay, and, and then, then when you catch, you actually I feel catch your feet before you catch your bars. Okay, and yep. then is there anything that you need to know about the trick, like lots of hop. getting out of it or anything like that? Probably just stay back. Don't go forward. What do you do if it goes wrong? <laughs> it, can you just kind of like let go and let it go? <laughs> you got it. Catch it everything you can. Right, but if yeah. it goes completely wrong, I feel like you can you just like let go and just let the. Oh bike... yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of safe. Yeah. Trying. Yeah, as long as you stay back. If you stay back, man, I've caught him like cannonball. Right. Yep. Can we see a couple? Absolutely. Yes. Ah. Can we do a couple more? Yeah. Good job. So there you go. There's four tricks that you can learn. I'm gonna put it out there, Carl. You might. I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Go ahead. You want to split fifty bucks with me for anyone who can do all four of those in a line? Oh God, yeah. Yeah. I'll throw in a free set of bars too. <laughs> free set of bars in fifty bucks from Carl and I for anyone who can do those four tricks in one line, no cuts, right? No cuts. No cuts. <laughs> no cuts. I'd say a couple bitch cranks and hops are okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no cuts. And because I feel like it's kind of unlikely that somebody's gonna do all four of those in a line, Carl just said. What'd you say? Okay, here's the deal, guys. Uh, let's give away some gift certificates. Choose any one of the four tricks we just showed. Pull it, tag the person that you did their trick, and then tag nowhere, and we'll give away three $25 gift cards. First three people to do this get the gift cards. Tag me too, because I want to see it too. Don't, <laughs> don't forget about me. So that being said, thank you guys for the uh, tricks. Follow every single one of these people in here. Yay. On Instagram. Thank you for watching. Subscribe here if you haven't. We'll see you tomorrow for another one.